This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Monday, July 22nd, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. Crop over activities continue to heat up as the clock ticks down to Kadumant Day. A number of events that have become staples of the season were held yesterday, including Soka on the Hill and the sold out Tipsy. The young ones had their day on the weekend as well in the junior mono competition. The mighty Bit Bit scored a perfect 100 points with the song The Style of Old Calypso in the 6 to 10 category. In his post win interview, he had some inspiring words saying the youth can do anything, but they have to put their minds to it. It feels perfect and nice to me. In terms of how far it came from last year to this year, so I'll be at the youngest in the competition. So that shows a lot. So I would say that the youth can do anything, but they have to put their minds to it. You were singing a big people song, they say. That's a big people song. How did you go about managing that song? In terms of the friends and the things Well, I have gotten a little bit of training from the Reggae Daddy. And that song, I learned to perform on stage with Calypso audience. That kind of stuff. Queen Shante emerged the winner in the 11 to 14 category singing Stop the Violence. She amassed 90 points. This song was created when I realized Barbados had gone through a crisis and it really needed to stop, so I wanted to use my talent to get the message out there. Who wrote this song? Myself, Trinity Clark, and Green Card. And in the 15 to 18 category, Kwan was crowned king for the second straight year. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was an amazing journey. Um, I'm very happy. Um, when I got smart, I was very comfortable with, with, with the song. Um, you know, I didn't want to come back um, being cliche. You know, um, saying something about myself again. You know, so I decided. You know, why not address something that's going on in the country? You know, we need to be smart people as well, and not just um, let the technology take over take over us. So yeah, that, that's how smart came about. Formal dialogue has started on paternity leave for Barbadian men. The Bureau of Gender Affairs has gotten the ball rolling following the recent announcement by telecoms company Flo that eight weeks paternity for men is now part of its new parent policy. Director of the Bureau of Gender Affairs, Patricia Boyce, says government sees paternity leave as a vehicle for social change and equality. But research has shown that being a father who is a rock in the early stages gives lasting confidence in their living. And the OECD report has shown that children have both improved cognitive scores and mental health outcomes as they grow older when both parents are involved in their lives from the onset. In contrast, it has been shown that when childcare responsibilities fall exclusively on the mother, the weight of the child can often lead to frustration due to sleep deprivation and exhaustion. The first few weeks of a child's life should be an intense bonding experience for mother, father, and baby. Being able to take care of a newborn can give our confident fathers the experience they need for future child care and parental involvement. The department recently teamed up with the Men's Committee to host a panel discussion on the topic, Is Paternity Leave Essential? The amount of funds being loaned to new small and medium-sized businesses by the Developmental Financing Agency fund access could soon be increased. Government has started discussions with NGOs and other institutions with a view to increasing the amount, including to the transportation sector. The announcement was made on the weekend by Minister of Small Business, Entrepreneurship and Commerce, Dwight Sutherland, at an event hosted by the agency. And I would love to see the day that Finances will open the floodgates for those persons and do so willingly. Not saying that they, they will not, but what they need is financing. So we as a government will sit with finance, with Finances, sorry, and with those non-governmental agencies and the international agencies to see how best we can facilitate these funds going into fund access so the transportation sector can indeed become a, a, a vibrant sector again in this country. So I also wish to take the opportunity to note that soon to be relaunched the Small Business Development Center 
that is the framework through which we want to build the micro, small and medium enterprise sector. And we have a number of small business development centers, the Small Business Association, we have the youth entrepreneurs scheme, we have university, academia, and we also have the Small Business Association. And Fanaccess is indeed a critical partner and a key spoke in that wheel, a cog in the wheel that will keep it turning as it relates to building up the micro, small and medium enterprise sector. Since it began operating 21 years ago, Fund Access has approved $64 million in loan to more than 1,500 clients. The minister says this equated to the creation of close to 2,400 jobs. He says the agency has a high success rate. Businesses accessing funding for the period January to June 2019 include traditional sectors such as retail and beauty industries. But however, for access drive to diversify its clients has reaped success with the agency now having clients that are involved in digital advertising, online education, veterinary and water treatment services, just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, while statistics show that 20% of new businesses failed in the first year of operation and 50% by the fifth year Fund Access can boast that approximately 75% of businesses are still in operation after the fifth year. There's regional and international news after this short break. Over now to Antigua and Barbuda, where the remaining Barbudans who were staying at a hotel following the devastation of Hurricane Irma in 2017 have been removed. We get the details from ABS TV News. It's the Barrymore Hotel now is under the care of the government of Antigua and Barbuda and has been earmarked to be developed into a premier small hotel and a business center. Now, ministry officials and representatives from the National Office of Disaster Services, NODS, with the assistance of the police, conducted an operation Saturday to have all the residents relocated as the facility is no longer a post-hurricane shelter. NODS started the process to relocate the Barbudans, and the Ministry of Works has now completed the process. The rooms were all cleared, and some of the occupants have removed their belongings from the compound. The occupants were given a deadline six months ago to vacate the facility. And they were also given the option of relocating back to Barbuda by the MP. The ministry has received additional reports of vandalism and the most recent report being uh, the theft of water from a nearby facility. Uh, these acts will not be condoned or supported according to the Ministry of Works statement. And finally, on the international scene, Hong Kong police yesterday fired rubber bullets and tear gas in running clashes with protesters who remain angry over an extradition bill and concerns of the erosion of freedoms by Beijing. Thousands of protesters descended on China's representative office in the city in a direct challenge to authorities in Beijing. We get more from Reuters TV. Chaos yet again on the streets of Hong Kong. Police fired tear gas to dis Chaos yet again on the streets of Hong Kong. Police fired tear gas to disperse protesters late on Sunday as anger over an extradition bill turned into a fresh front against what many see as a broader erosion of freedoms by Beijing. Thousands descended on China's representative office here, a direct challenge to the authorities and the city's political masters in the Chinese capital. Millions have taken to the streets in the past two months. An unprecedented show of force against Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam. It's triggered the worst social turmoil to rock the former British colony since it returned to Chinese rule 22 years ago. 
Some protesters threw paint bombs at the walls of the liaison office. Others spray-painted graffiti in the latest wave of demonstrations to hit the Asian financial center. We urge the government to stop leading Hong Kong toward the brink of destruction. Sunday's march focused on calls for the full withdrawal of the extradition bill, which would allow people to be extradited to mainland China for trial, and an independent investigation into complaints of police brutality. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbudastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as Crinply at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.